In this video, we'll learn how to animate clip paths using Webflow interactions. I'll leave a link to this clip path tool in the description below. Let's select the circle option, and there's a lot of ways we can have this animate, either from one of the corners, like so, or from the top or bottom middle, like so. So there's a lot of different interactions we can create with this. In my case, I'll just keep it right here in the middle, and I want it to animate from 0%, so fully clipped, to 70.7%, so fully revealed. I'll go ahead and copy this clip path, and I'll select my image in Webflow. Under Custom Properties, I'll paste it in. Now we want to animate this 70.7% number, and to do that, we need to save it in a variable. So I'll create a new percent variable, I'll call it something like circle clip, and I'll go ahead and set that to 70.7%. Now I'll just go ahead and copy this variable name, and we'll head back over to this clip path. We'll go ahead and delete the percentage, and we'll paste in the variable we just created. So now we're free to animate that variable. With the image selected, I'll head to Interactions, create an element trigger of while scrolling in view, and we'll go ahead and start an animation here. We'll create a new one called circle clip. And we want to set a variable on this element, so we'll say set variable value. We'll go ahead and set the value of circle clip to 0% by default, and we'll go ahead and set it on complete to 70.7%, like so. And so once we have that set, we can go ahead and preview. It looks like my ending point for this interaction is somewhere around 48%. I'll just go ahead and set it to end at 40% of the scroll. And so if we go ahead and preview this, we should notice that this circle is going to reveal while we're scrolling in. Now we can also use an inset clip path. So here I'm insetting the top and bottoms by 40%, the left and right by 10%. So we have that 10% on each side. And we can also adjust the roundedness of the corners like so. I'll go ahead and set that to two rim. Now, if we go ahead and set this inset to 50%, they'll meet in the middle and collapse completely. We can also define the inset for each of the sides, so left, top, right, bottom, in that order. And we can also define the roundedness of each of the corners. So if we plug in just different values here, we can make a unique shape like so. In this case, we want to control all of the sides together, so I'll delete this percent and just control them all from one value like so. So let's go ahead and copy this and here on this image, and we'll go ahead and paste this under custom properties. Notice how it doesn't make a perfect square, and that's because the ratio of the original image wasn't a square. So this is insetting it by 30% of the image width here, and by 30% of the image height here. And since the image width and height aren't the same, it's not making the square. Now if we change this to 50%, it'll inset it completely, and they'll all be clipped. And then we can just wrap that 50% in a calc and say minus 20 rim, or 20 viewport width, whatever unit we want there. And now it's 20 viewport width wide and tall. Now if we want to adjust the width and height independently, we would just copy this calc and have another one for the width, and we'd set that width to maybe 40 viewport width or whatever we want there. So that's how we can make a shape that's not just a square. Now we just want to animate this 2 rim to 0, this 20 viewport width, and 50% all to 0, and it would fully reveal the image. So let's go ahead and create a percent variable here, and we'll call this square, and we'll say percent, and we'll go ahead and set that to 50, that way it's completely clipped. We'll go ahead and create a size, we'll call this square radius, we'll set that to 2, and we'll create another size, and we'll call this square size. We'll set it to 20 viewport width, or whatever size we want for our square. Now let's just go ahead and copy this variable name, and we'll head back over here, and we'll replace this 50% with the variable we just created called square percent. We'll replace this viewport width with the variable we created called square size, and we'll replace this radius with the variable we created called square radius. So now we can animate this either on scroll, hover, or load. In this case, I'll do load here. And we'll go ahead and create an interaction here called load. And if we go ahead and set this, we'll go ahead and set a variable value. Um, we want to apply this to the class. We want to make sure it's our initial state. And we'll set the square percent value here. We'll also go ahead and set another variable value. And this one's going to be for square radius. And we'll set another variable value. And this one's for square size. Now once we have those set, we can just go ahead and duplicate these, and we can set any duration we want here. I'll do 2.5. We can do any ease we want. I'll do in out sign, and we can just set these to how we want them to animate. So the size will animate from 20 to 0. The percent in set will animate from 50 to 0, so it's fully revealed, and the radius will animate from zero, uh, 2 to 0. 
so it becomes um, revealed like so. Now notice how it's going from the center. We actually want it to register our initial states. And to do that, for some reason in Webflow, we just had to reset these values. So I'm just gonna hit my up and down arrow keys to reset them and make sure they're applied. And then once we have that set now, it should animate from our true starting point. So that's how to create these clip path interactions in Webflow.